I'm Emilio Pasmino, and this is the Curly Tailed Lizard. As you all know, right now we're facing a very difficult situation here on planet Earth with the coronavirus pandemic. So instead of heading off to somewhere like the Everglades and searching for exotic creatures, we're going to adhere to the stay at home order and look for wildlife right here in our backyard. And I found pretty much the most common lizard you're going to see in South Florida. Well, second to the brown and all like the one we have over here. But this guy in my hand is the curly-tailed lizard. The reason these guys are called the curly-tailed lizard is because a lot of the time you're going to see them on rocks and stuff, and they're actually going to have their tails in this sort of spiral form like that. So they're going to have the curly tail. The problem is with this one is that it actually, if you see very closely right here, this black part of the tail that's not striped like the front, means that it actually broke it off and regenerated. Because as we know from other videos, Lizards can do that, or well, most lizards can do that, where if a predator comes by, they can break off their tail as a distraction, and then later it's going to grow back. However, when it grows back, it's a different color, and it doesn't have as much flexibility, so it probably has to keep it straight. So while this is a curly-tailed lizard, it can't curl its tail. Like pretty much every other lizard you're going to see here, except for the green and all, these guys are considered an invasive species. They're originally from the Bahamas and Cuba. However, what makes them different from other lizards is the reason they were brought here. It wasn't because of the pet tree. It was actually because in the 1940s, a farmer did an experiment where he thought that these guys would be able to control some of the pests in the sugarcane plantations in Palm Beach. And he released, I think, about 40 of them or something. And although they didn't eat the sugar pests like they were intended to, they were able to explode in population due to the environment of Florida, which has a lot of heat, a lot of moisture, perfect condition for lizards like these and they began to colonize all the southern area of Florida and now you can find them pretty much everywhere here. Despite the fact that these lizards are pretty common, they're not at all easy to catch. That's because they're very fast and they're usually not very far away from a rock or their burrow which they can just hide in. Now there are a few characteristics of the morphology of this lizard that I'm going to point out including the hard head, softer body, sort of ridge of spikes that runs down the length of the body vertically and these scales that are smooth if you rub them one way but are very abrasive if you go the other then you have the sharp little claws and oh see he wants to bite me this is very similar to another lizard I caught back in Ecuador called the world tail iguana They're almost the same size, they serve pretty much the same ecological niche in both of their habitats respectively. The only difference is that this guy can curl its tail. Their diet consists mostly of insects and other lizards, which they chase down using their speeds and then bite with their powerful jaws. Speaking of powerful jaws, let's see how hard that bite is. And there it goes. See, for a lizard this small, they have a pretty strong bite. And they have these little razor sharp teeth. And he's not letting go. For future reference, if you want an animal with curved teeth to let you go, like for example a lizard or a large snake, never try to pull your finger out because that'll actually end up tearing more of your skin. What you want to do instead is push your finger forward in the same direction as the animal so that it has to open its mouth more and then you quickly pull it out like that. That way you do very little damage to your skin and you make the animal let go without having to tear off any of its teeth. If you look really closely right here, you can see that this guy's actually shedding a little bit. Because like all reptiles, when they grow, their skin does not grow with them. So they have to shed continuously. And you see, I'm going to peel a little bit off some curly tail skin. We've been handling this little lizard a lot, and I think it's time to let him go. We're going to put him right back in the same crevice where we found him. Bueno muchachos, until next time. Okay, and there he goes. Three, two, one back in the hole. One last thing before we head to the outro, I just wanted to share with you guys that this week we made it to 2,000 subscribers here on YouTube and 5,000 followers on Instagram. So thank you so much for all the support and to celebrate we're going to have a special Q&A video next week. So any questions you guys might have about animals, the channel, Jaeger or even just me, be sure to leave them in the comments down below 
And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading them. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new adventures by clicking the channel icon right above or click here to watch another video. And as always, thanks for watching.